Um, it took me, like I said, about 34 days to to uh, build that account. It took me less than 72 hours to basically lose the entire account. And uh, at that point, man, like, I just said, you know, trading just, it's, it's not for me. What's going on, dope people? It's Deuce the Dope Dad back for another video. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I lost over $30,000, roughly $33,000 to be exact, trading. Now, there's enough videos on YouTube showing you guys how to get the bag. In this video, my goal and objective, hopefully influence you guys not to blow the bag. All right, so I know what some of y'all thinking. Some of y'all thinking, dude, this must be clickbait. If you really blew $33,000, how are you even making a video? Well, the truth is I was pretty much down and out and, and pretty much depressed for a few months. Uh, this actually happened roughly, I think now it was September of 21. So it was roughly maybe nine months ago uh, when this actually happened. And I, I just wasn't in a space to where I could, t I could talk about this. You know, it actually, it took me a while to even tell my wife what had happened. And I was just in a, in a, in a space to where you know, I, I stopped trading for a while and I pretty much didn't look at the markets for, I mean, it was, it was, it was months. I, I can't give y'all an exact time frame, but I know it was months that I just didn't look at the markets and, you know, I was just, just down, you know, and could, could hardly look at myself in the mirror and I'm going to kind of rewind and kind of give you guys a little backstory on, on what led up until blowing that 30,000 and how I even was, you know, able to have 30,000 in the trading account. So back in maybe February of 2021, I had started trading and, you know, it was a world that was brand new to me because in the community that I grew up in, where I come from, you know, we didn't learn anything about the financial markets and, and credit and, you know, uh, you know, different things when it comes to growing wealth, like real estate and stuff like that. We just didn't, those weren't really, you know, topics of conversations. And if they were, then maybe I just missed them. But, you know, I, I don't remember any of those conversations. And so in my 20s, I started, you know, looking for different ways that I can create, you know, cash flow and, and start to create some wealth for myself. You know, I had my first son when I was 22. Uh, my next son, I had, we had him, I think I was 28. And so, I understood very quickly that I had to make some things happen because it wasn't just about me anymore. You know, I got two kids now, a wife now, and there are other people counting on me to provide and make things happen in this world. And so I did a lot of other things in the past and then I stumbled upon trading uh, last year and it went well in the beginning. In the beginning, I was, you know, really just learning a lot. I had uh, enrolled in this uh, financial uh, platform that taught, you know, trading in the Forex markets and stuff like that. And it was very informative, all the education that you need. But what I came to find out was for me and what I learned and what I want to give you guys is, I mean, you could pretty much have all the education in the world. You can have all the, all the mentorship in the world, but what it really boils down to is that person and those thoughts between your two ears. And what I learned from blowing that amount of money is I still had some work to do. And up until that point, I thought I was a, you know, I thought I was a pretty positive person. I was, I've always been energetic my entire life. I always been pretty positive my entire life. Um, but what I started to realize was there were certain things, there were certain traumas and there were certain uh, things from my past that trading brought out of me that I feel like I had suppressed for so many years. And so when I had started out trading, you know, I wasn't really risking big amounts. I think my first account that I funded, it was roughly, I think maybe $250 or something like that. And I'm going to be real with you guys, you know, um, that account that I blew that $30,000, it actually wasn't my first account. I had blown a ton of accounts up until that point with, with, know smaller amounts and when I say smaller I'm talking about a hundreds and you know uh, maybe a few thousand dollars that I had blown previously I had probably blown maybe I don't know five or six accounts before this uh, $30,000 account before I had grew that account to $30,000 
And so when I started this account, when I started that account that I blew the $30,000, I told myself like, yo, bro, this is my last time putting money into the markets because, you know, I had dip, start dipping into my savings. I had start dipping into uh, other investments that I had. Even a lot of my crypto that I had recurring investments in, I was starting to dip into that as well to refund uh, my trading account. And so, you know, I had pretty much got to a point to where I was like, yo, I am not funding another account. Like, this is it. And that's what I told myself. And I stuck to I stuck to my word for about a month. And so this this account that um, I'm, I'm talking to you guys about that I'm sure sharing this story about um, at that particular time, the account was down to two thousand dollars. It, it was just for some reason I kept getting this account to about five thousand dollars and I would go backwards. You know, I would go back to like fifteen hundred or, or two thousand dollars, and I get it back to five thousand dollars, and then go back to two thousand, then go back to fifteen hundred, go to eighteen hundred, go to thirty three hundred, and it was just like I just kept hitting that ceiling. I couldn't break past that five thousand dollars, and I really couldn't understand it because what was blowing my mind was I'm like, what I did to get this from five hundred to five thousand, or from a thousand to five thousand. What's preventing me and what's stopping me from getting this from five to five thousand to ten thousand and from ten thousand fifteen and so on and so on and so forth? And it, it just wasn't making sense to me. And you know, I had read a few books before uh talking about we all have a financial thermostat and we're all you know um basically wired to only be comfortable with a certain amount of money, only be able to attract a certain amount of money based off of the level of growth or where we are as far as our where, where we are as far as our growth. And so I reread that book and I started to understand. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So what I need to do is I need to basically uh, get back into books, get back into you know um, studying, you know, because what started happening in the beginning, I was you know doing all the education, watching all the videos, and once I got a, you know, kind of had an understanding of what I was doing, I kind of put the education aspect to the side. And, you know, I was, you know, trying to trade because I had these, you know, these these big goals, these big dreams. I was setting, I mean, I set so many 90-day game plans on, okay, if I put $500 in this account, and if I grow the account 10% a day in 90 days, 90 trading days, I have over a million dollars, I have over you know, uh, 20 some million dollars and stuff. And so what I started to understand and realize, like when I look back on that stuff, I was setting these goals that were so far fetched and, and to be honest, not realistic because I had never made that type of money before. I had never made multi, you know, millions before. So what made me think that I was going to get involved with trading and make that in three months, six months, even a year? If I had never seen that type of income before in my personal bank account. And so I understood that I, I needed to start, you know, working on myself. I'm going to give you guys three things that I learned with blowing that $30,000. The first one being discipline. I thought that I was a disciplined person. I really did. I thought I was disciplined. But what I, what I realized was um, I was lacking uh, in emotional maturity. I was lacking in discipline. And it humbled me very quickly. And so... The discipline aspect, I feel like is very important because there's nobody, when you're trading, there's nobody standing over your shoulder, especially if you're a retail trader and you're not trading for a hedge fund or, you know, some of these big corporations. When you're in that room, it's nobody but you and you and you, you versus you, you on your laptop, you on your computer, you on your monitor. It's only you. So it's no one to, to, to spoon feed you or hold your hand. You know, so you have to be a very disciplined person. You have to set rules for yourself because if you break your rules, then you have to deal with the consequences. And so that's one of the things that I learned uh, when it came to maturity. As far as my emotions, I realized that I had to start doing some internal work when it comes to controlling my anger and I rarely ever got angry, but for some reason, when I lost the trade, revenge trading had me in a chokehold. Like, I just could not. My, so one of my rules was, I, I had a list of rules here. And one of those rules were, look, if you lose two trades in a row, you're done for the day. Like, like that's it. You know, because at that point, 
I was risking three to five percent on every single trade. So that means that if I lose two trades in a row, my account is now down six percent, six to ten percent actually. And the type of trade with the type of trade that I was doing, I was doing um, binary options within the forex market. It's a lot different than trading stocks and uh, stock options. You know, typically if you're having recurring investments in the stock market, I mean your your account is only going to grow eight to ten percent in an entire year overall on average. And here I am trying to do that every day. So you think about how how far fetched that type of goal and, and, and how insane this may be for some of y'all to hear this. But I know there's other people out there like me that's probably setting these unrealistic expectations and it's sending you into a, a place that you never thought you would be in mentally and emotionally and, and financially. And my whole goal in creating this video is to just tell you to just stop. You know, until you feel you have yourself in check, until you've done some internal work, listen to some audios and read some books and getting around the right type of people, maybe you just need to back away from your monitor or, or your laptop or the trading platform altogether. You need to probably just back away from that stuff. And that's what I wish I would have done sooner. I wish it didn't take me losing over $30,000, you know, and, and not really understanding the power that I had into my trading account. So $30,000 into my trading account it, it and not understanding like what that type of money could do with leveraging that money, it just, it sent me in a spiral downhill. So what had happened was I set a goal. I made a, uh, I made a game plan to where I said, okay, what I want to do is I want to grow my account anywhere between eight to 10% every single day. And with the amount that I was trading, I was trading roughly 3% a day, like I said, 3 to 5% a day. So I can achieve my goal in about three, maybe four trades. And if I was doing anything over that, like I'm over trading. And to get those amount of trades, if you're waiting on good setups, great setups, if you know you're only taking, taking a certain amount of trades, then those three trades, those four trades, those two trades, whatever you're doing, it should be great setups. The, 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 it should check the boxes. You know, everybody have different strategies. There's tons of strategies out here. No matter what kind of trading you do, you know, it doesn't even matter. The, you know, you know, whether that's Forex, whether that's trading crypto, whether that's trading stocks and options, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're trading commodities. There's different strategies for all this stuff. And the strategy is not, I mean, the strategy is important, but it's not as important as you having discipline, you having rules and you following those rules because uh, I saw the consequences of not following those rules. All right, so now that we've talked about discipline and why having discipline is important and how that carries over the discipline in your personal life, how that carries over into your trade, how that emotional maturity in your personal life carries over into your trade. Now we're going to talk about what I call the three overs. And these three things could also be preventing you from having the success uh, that you desire in your trading journey. So that's over trading, of course, over analyzing and over leveraging, which, which is if you say you're going to risk 2 percent, 3 percent, you're risking 10 percent. Right. You're over leveraging. Or if you say you're going to stop trading after losing two trades in a row and you still continue to trade after five losses, then you're over leveraging, you're over trade. And see, the only reason why I was doing this and the only reason why you may be doing this is because you're thinking short term. You're thinking about your, your current situation, right? And I was thinking about doing something in 90 days that I had never done before when if you really think about the long term and the bigger picture, what I was doing in 90 days, trying to basically grow my account 8 to 10% in 90 days, I look back on that and think, well, what if I would have told myself, look, I only want to grow my account 2 to 5% a day. Now, at this point, I'm only taking one or two trades a day versus three or four. Now, you take that perspective now. So, in 90 days, I'm thinking short term. But let's just say if I would have looked at over a course of six months to a year and I told myself that once I got to that $30,000 or when my account was at $2,000 when I, when I started my journey, 
What if I told myself, or what if you tell yourself that you only want to grow your account two to 5% a day? And that's only taking one or two trades based on the amount that you're risking. So that's a more realistic goal. If you're thinking about that, and if you're really thinking about the bigger picture, the long term is really still short term. When you really think about your life expectancy, and if you think about what you've done in the past year, the past two years, you think about where you are compared to the last five years, 10 years ago, even for me, doesn't seem like that long ago. But what if I would have told myself, okay, instead of 90 days, I'm going to give myself a year to do this. And I only want to grow my account 2% every day, 3% every day, 5% every day consistently. And that's just, you know, trading days. Think about the impact that I could have or that could have had on your trading journey, on my trading journey. If we just would have took a long-term mindset, a long-term mindset versus having a short-term mindset. Now, I understand that there are situations we want to get out of in a short amount of time. But like I said, when you think about the long-term, five years from now, 10 years from now, that's still a short amount of time compared to your life. So what I want you to do is take your short-term thinking, turn that to long-term. And nine times out of 10, when you look at it, the bigger picture, the grand scheme of things, your long term is still short term. Now, I know some of you guys are probably thinking, OK, OK, you telling us what not to do and you're giving us these tips and stuff like this. Dude, how did you actually blow that amount of money? Well, what happened was, like I told you guys, I started the account with two thousand dollars and I was consistent with growing that account eight to ten percent. I think it was about thirty four trading days uh, in a row that I was consistent consistent in hitting my goal and I was just getting off of my laptop. I was just done. I would just go on about my life and I would do something else. What happened was we took a vacation and during that vacation, on the way to that vacation, I traded that day. But when I got back, I didn't trade the entire time I was on that vacation. And when I got back, I was behind maybe four days. I was behind maybe like four training days. So at this point, that was roughly about 25,000 ish in the account. Uh, I'm ballparking at 25, 26 in the account at that time. And so when I got back, the first couple, the first day I got back, I was actually able, you know, to get to get the account to like thirty, thirty thousand dollars or whatever. And that next day is when I got up like five o'clock in the morning. So what worked for me was waking up real early in the morning before the kids got up, before my wife got up. That way, you know, I had that time to myself to really dial in and lock in and, you know, trade or whatever. That second day, um, it's, man, it's, it's so crazy. This this is nuts. And I'm, I'm, I'm gonna post a video of that. I'll probably, probably put it like right here. I actually risk I was trying to make a thousand dollar trade and, and, and see this was what I'm talking about this is one of the things I was talking about I was I was rushing I was you know in panic mode trying to catch up on my days and I was supposed to place a thousand dollar trade and I ended up placing a ten thousand dollar trade and man when I tell you my heart was beating so bad it was uh I think that trade was for like five minutes and because with binary options, you're trading like there's no with binary options. There's no, you know, stop loss. You know, there's it's either you got it right or you got it wrong. Like there's no in between. So it's either you win the trade you, or you lose the trade. You don't get some of your money. You lose all of your money. Right. You don't make some of the profit. You make the max amount of profit uh, that you can make on that particular particular setup in that time frame. So what happened was. Thank goodness, Whew. man, my, my anxiety was going crazy. I had risked $10,000 and I ended up winning that trade. It was for like 17,000. So I think like 7,100 um, that uh, I profited on that trade right there. Instead of me getting off after having that, that damn near panic attack, I continued the trade. And, you know, cause I'm trying to catch up with my days instead of just breaking things down, instead of just understanding I was already at $30,000. You know, if I, if I make, Hell, 2% a day 
over the course of four days, you know, that's 8% in the entire account. And that's more than what, you know, some people are making on their job. That's roughly what, 1800 $1,800, $1, something like that in a week. Instead of me thinking like that, I was thinking like, oh, I got to get to a million in these next 60 days. I got to get to a million, you know? And so it was that type of thinking that caused me to just go haywire and just my brain was just like on fire it was crazy you know so I, I continued to trade i lost the trade all right so i doubled up then i lost that trade oh man now i'm back in the 20s now i'm back at, at, at like 26 I'm it's like the ten thousand dollar trade had never happened <sighs> when i tell you i was so scared <laughs> like i'm like man i gotta make this money back so i'm down to twenty thousand. like okay Matter of fact, I'm done. So I put the I put the uh, clothes out the laptop. I was done for probably about a couple hours, but it was just on my mind. It was like, dude, how do you go from having thirty thousand in your account to having you back to twenty, and you your account is your balance is lower than what you started with for the day? So I was like, no, I got to get back to it. So I went back in there, you know, kids coming in. At this point, the kids are up. So the kids coming back and forth in the room. I'm trying to just give them money back. And dog, at this point, I'm just stressing. Like, I'm just stressing because, you know, now I went from 30000 to 20000 to like 18000 So now I'm under 20000 now. And so I was like, you know what, man, I am, I am, no, I'm done. And so I really was done for the day, you know, but all throughout that day, I just could not go on. And I just started to just constantly beat myself up throughout the day. And so uh, once the kids went back, to, went to bed that night, you know, the wife went to sleep, I decided to get back in the markets. <laughs> so it was about 10 o'clock at night and I would win some, I would lose some, I would win some, I would lose some, I would win some, I would lose some, I'm going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, 18,000, 15,000, 16,000, 17,000, 14,000, 13,000, 11,000, 13,000, 14,000, 11,000. That's when I said I'm done. Man, I'm kind of getting chills even thinking about it because, like I said, I started the day at like 26000 huh? I got it up to like 32000 33000 something like that. I don't know. The moral story is, so I was done that day at about 11000 And so the next day, I decided to get up early in the morning. I was like, okay, mentally, I'm good. You still at eleven. And I start trying to rationalize myself like, hey, you started this account with 2000 so really you still good. But what I didn't realize was the emotions were still taking control of me. I wasn't in control. The emotions were in control. And so what I started to do was instead of taking my risk back down to that 2%, back down to that 3%, what I had been doing to get the account up to that $30,000, what did I start doing? I started risking 8%. I started risking 10% of the account. So now, instead of taking $200 trades, which I should be taking at the at the, at the $11,000, I'm taking $1,000 trades. So now every loss that I'm, that I'm, that I'm making, I'm losing $1,000. I'm losing $2,000, so doubling it up now. And you know, I think at one point I took a $4,000 trade, boom, now that counts back down to what I started with at $2,000. So understand what I'm saying. It took me 30 days. Oh, man. Man, I'm talking about, I can't believe I'm talking about this. But I, I told myself I wasn't going to talk about this until, you know, I got my mind right. I got my, my, my account back right. And... I just got myself back together uh, emotionally. So um, it took me, like I said, about 34 days to to uh, build that account. It took me less than 72 hours to basically lose the entire account. And uh, at that point, man, like I just said, you know, trading just it's, it's not for me. You know, it's just not something that, you know, maybe God made me lose this because this is not what he wanted me to do. 
And I just start trying to make all these excuses for myself mentally when it had nothing to do with God. It had nothing to do with any of that other stuff. Any of these make, -be make believe fairy tales that I'm making up. It was me. I had to take ownership and accountability of that. I wasn't ready. You know, greed took over. The emotions took over. The lack of discipline took over. And that's tough when you look yourself in the mirror and you realize like, man, okay. So the reason why I am where I am right now is because of me, not because of other people. It's some things that I haven't came to grips with yet. And it was just like this, I don't know, man, like a, I had this, it's like this dark hole for a while, for a long time. And not only did I lose, you know, that 30000 in the trading account, but I think about my savings. I had probably lost 50% of my savings because I was re investing into that account. I lost a, a lot of the investments I had because I was reinvesting into that account. And should it have taken me all of this to learn my lesson? No, it shouldn't have taken all of that. But sometimes you just got to get beat up to, <laughs> to understand like, hey, you got to get better. You got to get better. You got to get back in the gym mentally. And that's what I had to do. And that's what I committed to myself um, after that process. I didn't have no other choice because I wasn't about to find that account again. Not at that particular time I was. I wasn't about to find that account again, no. And so I took that time to work on myself. I dive deeper into how I came about, how I came out of that hole in another video. But I just wanted to come and I just wanted to make this video today to hopefully stop the person that's probably, you know, have gone to YouTube right now and they're, they, they've, you know, lost a significant amount of money now. To some people, that, that 30000 may not be a lot of money to you, you know, as far as losing. You know, um, to some people, that may be what they make in a year, you know. But I know for me at that particular time, man, that was a significant amount of money to take an L on, you know, and... Those are the type of things that people get divorced behind, being real. Because now at this point, you're taking money out of the house. Those are the type of things that people, you know, I don't want to say the word, you know, but those are the type of things people could, you know, hurt themselves over, you know? And I just thank God that, you know, you know, I didn't have those type of thoughts and, you know, I didn't follow through on, you know, any kind of thoughts like that or anything. Um, but I just wanted to share this share, share this story and just let you guys know, hey, if you just starting out, you know, the things that I talked about are the things you want to stay away from. If you're currently in the midst of that now and you're watching this video, stop and work on between your ears. And if you have been through this and have a similar story to me and you're just trying to find encouragement to pick you back up. Do it when it's the right time for you. Now, I know the traumatic um, emotions and, and, and feelings this may have caused for you because I felt those emotions. You know, so nobody can tell you when to pick back up and, you know, dust yourself off and try it again. Nobody can tell you that but you. But I'm telling you, it's important. Spend some quiet time with yourself. And take that time to, 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 to separate and communicate that with your family that, hey, I'm going to take some time to myself. I got to get better. And it's important that you do that, especially if you got other people counting on you. It's, it's important that you do that because especially if you're a man right now looking at this, a lot of men suffer in silence. And like I said, I'm not going to dive too deep into that. I'm going to talk about that on the next video, how I came you know, out of that depression. You know, but if you're suffering in silence right now, I'm talking to you. Take your time. Come out of that. Spend some time with yourself. Read a book. Go sit in nature somewhere by yourself. Go take you a vacation. Go sit in the sand. Go sit on that ocean. 
seek out a therapist. And if, if it's got too bad for you, go check yourself in somewhere, some type of institution. Go seek the help that you need. I didn't plan on getting this deep in, in this video. Like I said, you know, this is my story here. And if I could uh, go back and change some things about what I did, I definitely would. I definitely would. Because <laughs> I would want to take that significant of a hit to learn a lesson. But maybe I had to take that hit to inspire you. Just maybe. I don't know. And trust and believe, you're going to come out of it. Once you get yourself right up here, right here, you're going to come out of it. Trust me. I came out of it. And I'm going to make a video to follow up this video and let you know how I came out of it. I appreciate y'all taking that time out and spending some time with me today. It's Deuce of Dope Dad. I'll see y'all in the next video.